Did I lie? What's crackalacking, y'all? My name is Oriafa, and I'm a first year medical student who makes videos about college, Howard, and my medical school journey. So if you're interested in any of that, please subscribe, like, comment, share, turn on post notifications, join the fam. Today, I will be talking about what they don't tell you about being a pre-med. If you're watching this video, you're probably in high school or in college, or maybe you've even finished college. And I'm assuming you have at least some sort of interest in the career of medicine. But being a pre-med is not always what it may seem. And my purpose in this video is to tell you the real tea about being a pre-med student. It's not as glamorous as it may seem. I actually work with some of my classmates in making this video, so these things I'm saying are not only from my own mind, but from other people who are also in medical school and have completed the pre-med journey. And the people I talk to have gone through various routes to get to medical school. So after collaborating with some of my friends, I compiled a long list of various things that you should know going into the pre-med journey that you may or may not have been told already. But a lot of these things are things that you don't find out until you get into college. So if you ever see me look down, I'm looking at my notes on my iPad. So I'm just going to get into what they don't tell you about being a pre-med. The first point I'm going to say is probably one of the most important considering I wrote it down initially and then when I was calling my friends who are also in medical school, they were telling me the same thing. So pay attention to this one. Number one, community is so important as a pre-med. You will not make it through this pre-med journey alone. It's not possible. It is very important that you surround yourself with like-minded people who also want to succeed and are going on the same track as you. Because at the end of the day, the only people who really know what you're going through, at least to some extent, are other people who are on a pre-med track. Surrounding yourself with a community of pre-meds will help you to navigate your journey more smoothly. So what can you do to build community? One, you can join an organization that your school may have that might be related to the health sciences or being a pre-med. So for example, my school, Howard University, had a program called Health Profession Society. So basically people who are pre-med, pre-dental, pre-pharmacy, whatever um, profession that they wanted to go into related to healthcare, there was an organization for us. And through that organization, I was able to meet some other people who are on a pre-med track, find people who are like-minded, and I was able to learn about various med schools that would come to present and give information about their school. I was also able to better learn how to write my personal statement for medical school and do many things related to the medical school application. And not only do I recommend you join a formal organization related to it, but also I think it's a good idea to create a study group of people who are like-minded. And who knows, that study group can even turn into your friend group. Like I said before, other pre-meds are the only people who really understand what you're going through. And me being close to my study group is largely what made my pre-med experience so enjoyable. So it's key that you find a group of people who will build you up and uplift you and you can help them, they can help you. When you're down, they can pull you up. No matter what you do, don't go through college, don't go through your pre-med journey alone. Number two, another thing that they don't tell you about being a pre-med, which is kind of contradicting the last thing I said, but not everyone in the pre-med community is your friend. Of course, there are plenty of people who are there to build you up and to encourage you, but there are also some people who are trying to tear you down. In Grey's Anatomy, Christina Yang would describe them as a shark. Don't come to me for absolution. You want to be a shark, be a shark. I'm not. Oh, oh yes, you are. Especially at schools that have a curve graded system, so many students are competing against each other as a pre-med. Be better than anyone here. There are no teams here. No buddies. So not everybody is looking out for you and you should be aware of that. You know, if you ask somebody for help with a 
question. They might teach you to do it the wrong way just because they don't want you to do as well. They might not share resources with you. They may not share their study techniques with you. And honestly, that's okay. There are always going to be mean people in this world, but I still think it's important for you to find that group of people who you can trust. The third thing that they don't tell you about being pre-med is that a pre-med major is not a thing except for at a few select schools. I definitely did not know this when I was in 11th grade thinking about college. As a pre-med, you can be any major in college whatsoever. You just need to make sure you fulfill certain prerequisites for medical school. My recommendation is that you major in whatever you're passionate about. Even if it's not directly related to the sciences, it could add diversity to your application in a sense. But when I say that, you should also take into consideration that some majors have more overlap with the medical school prerequisites than others. For example, majors such as biology, chemistry, biochemistry may have more overlap. So it's really a personal decision of what you're passionate about and how much you're willing to take extra classes to fulfill the requirements to meet your ultimate goal. But you really do not need to be a biology major to go into medical school. Personally, in college, I was a biology major, chemistry minor, but I was in a BSMD program, so I only really took the medical school prerequisites. Genetics, didn't take it. Cell bio, didn't take it. Microbio, didn't take it. And I'm in med school now, and I'm doing fine. So really, you can choose whatever major. Just make sure you have the classes that you need. The fourth thing that they don't tell you is that you need to build relationships with your professors. Most important reason being, you're gonna need some professors for your letters of recommendations, especially the science professors. But another thing being, this one's top secret, a professor is more likely to bump that 88 up to a 90 if they know who you are. Some of those A's you see on my transcript are 87s. Professors do have that control to sway your grade. And ultimately, if they have a better relationship with you and they see that you're working hard, you show up to office hours, they know that you put in so much work, they just might bump up your grade a little bit. And that ultimately strengthens your GPA, which is important in your med school application. I don't even know what number I'm on anymore. Maybe fifth, I think, I'm not really sure. But relating to my last point, the next thing that they don't tell you about pre-med is that your professor is one of the biggest determinants of how you do in the class. And that is why it is so important for you to check ratemyprofessor.com before registering for your classes, especially the science classes. I'm not even gonna lie. Some professors just aren't that good at teaching. Did I lie? And one thing about college that makes it a little different from high school is that you often find yourself teaching your darn self for some of your classes. But if you have a professor who's more clear at communicating, or even having a professor who gives extra credit opportunities and who's open to students asking for help, chances are you might do better in the class than somebody who took a different professor. If you have a better professor, you'll learn better. And when you learn better, you get higher grades. And also when you learn better, your MCAT studying is going to be a lot more smooth. And in the day, your GPA is gonna be higher. It's a win-win scenario all around. And a tip that I have to get the best professors possible, this may only work if you're still in high school and haven't applied to college yet, but usually people who are in the honors programs at their schools get first pick at their professors. In large part, the reason I was able to get the professors that I wanted which ultimately made my GPA stronger, was because I was able to register a week before everybody else being in my program. All in all, the professor does matter. And this is gonna kind of piggyback off the last thing I said. I've said that like seven times so far. Everything's piggybacking off everything. Anyway, in college in general, no matter what major you are, no matter what track, you need to take your learning into your own hands. In high school, you may be able to just show up to class every day and do your homework and get an A or a B, no problem. But when you're in college, the professors honestly only care about you so much, especially when they got 499 other people in the class. It is completely your responsibility to figure out the information that's being taught and be able to apply it come test day. 
When I was in college, I would often read the textbook to supplement what I'm seeing on the PowerPoint. And I'd also watch YouTube videos in addition to that sometimes. If you need to get a tutor, get a tutor. But no matter what, you have to remember your grades are your responsibility. You're an adult now. Or even in my case, I wasn't an adult, but still, your responsibility. <laughs> Another thing is that building relationships with your professors is actually a lot harder than it is in high school. In the high school setting, your teachers are basically kind of forced to know your name because they're seeing you every single day and they're grading your papers every single day by hand and there are only so many people in the class. So they kind of have to pay attention to you and have to care about your success. But you know, professors really aren't going to make all that much effort to get to know you for the most part. Some are different, but for the most part, if you want to know a professor to have a close relationship with them, you need to initiate that. Another thing that I was not prepared for was that the labs are very long. Guess how long they are? Three or four hours. Yeah, three, four hour labs. I wasn't prepared. So this is honestly just to give you guys a heads up. But honestly, we oftentimes finish early or it's kind of actually fun to do because you're really getting on their hands on. So honestly, I kind of like lab, but it takes a lot of time. Another thing that they don't tell you about being a pre-med is that there is so much diversity in the pre-med community. Being pre-med looks so different for different people. Some people take gap years after undergrad, some people don't. Some people have whole careers before going into medical school. Some people have families by the time they're going into medical school. Some people are old, some people are young. Some people finish undergrad in two years and then go straight into medical school. Some people are international students, so that adds a whole nother battle to the process. But all in all, don't feel like just because you're at this point in life that you can't follow your dream of becoming a doctor. So never feel like there's only one straight path to medicine. The next thing, which is kind of self-explanatory in a sense, is you need to do a lot. There's a lot you got to get done. Most competitive medical school applicants keep up a GPA of 3.7 or above, do volunteer work, do research, shadow, do clinical work, get some sort of other experience in the field. Everybody has to take the MCAT, which is the admissions test to get into medical school, somewhat analogous to the SAT and ACT for college. And the list honestly goes on. There are many things that you need to do on your journey, but you know, thousands of people have done it. You can do it too if you have the right community and the right advising and you're constantly networking and looking for various opportunities. One of my friends recommended doing at least one activity related to medicine per month, whether that be community service or shadowing, whatever can help bolster your application. But even with saying that, it's crucial to remember that quality is greater than quantity. It's better for you to have a few extracurriculars that you're really passionate about, even if they're not related to medicine, and still have some that are related to medicine, than to have a resume that is a thousand pages long, but you don't really have any actual commitment to anything. You don't want them to ask you about a certain extracurricular in your interview and you're like, you should be able to speak to your contributions in that organization or in that extracurricular. Another thing that people don't tell you is the importance of planning your time. Being a pre-med, you may not have as much free time as your other friends who are doing other tracks. And that's not a bad thing, but you just have to realize that you can't be at every single event. You can't be at every single party. It's very important that you keep a schedule, see what you can and can't do, balance your life, have a little fun here and there. But no matter what, remember the importance of the ability to say no. If you have an exam on Friday, why are you going to the darty on Thursday? I'm not saying you can't have any sort of social life. You can, but you need to make sure that you're getting what you need to get done, done. I rave about this in literally almost every video I have up, but I personally keep a planner. And in my planner, I write down various, you can't see it, but I write down various events that I have, 
so that I don't have any scheduling conflict and so that I can see what I have to do in a day. And that just helps me to stay organized. And I recommend it for each and every single one of you. You don't even necessarily have to have a paper planner. I think there's an app called Notion that you can have a planner on your phone. Or even if you're just using the Google Calendar, whatever you do to stay organized, you should do. I am starting to near the end, but the next thing is that being smart can only get you so far. And you don't need to be smart to go into medical school. You know what I mean. You are labeled gifted as a child. You are in gifted programs in elementary school. All throughout grade school, school came easy for you. But maybe by the time you hit high school or by the time you hit college, you don't really know how to work hard to get something as well because everything used to come so easily to you. Hey y'all, I just wanted to clarify that that last point doesn't necessarily apply to everybody. In fact, some people have the opposite experience growing up in elementary and middle school. But I just wanted to say that it's not about how book smart you were growing up that determines your success as a pre-med, but about how much work you put in. But like I said earlier, in college you can't just show up, do the homework, and do well. Because half the time there don't even be homework. It really is about you putting in the work and you learning how you study effectively. It's okay to explore different studying techniques. Even right now I'm in that phase in medical school. But you need to find out what works for you and put in the work to get your grades. The last thing that I want to touch on is that the road won't always be smooth. You might find yourself having a relative die. You might find yourself in some sort of family issue. Even school might just be hard and it might just be overwhelming for you. So even though you're pre-med, you have to remember life still goes on. Things still happen. And that's why it's so important for you to prioritize your mental health and all aspects of your health. Which is why this video is sponsored by BetterHelp. I'm kidding, it's not. I only have 500 subscribers. I'm not getting sponsored right now. Better help if you're watching this video, hit me up. My email's in the description. <laughs> but in all seriousness, it really is important for you to prioritize your mental health and if you need to seek counseling or therapy or even just talk to a trusted friend or family member, do what you got to do to be in your best state of mind. Thank you so, so much for watching this video and I want to take the time to thank you guys for 500 subscribers. 500 people took their fingers, put it on their cursor, and hit the subscribe button to see my face. I literally can't even describe it into words. I really appreciate everybody following me on my medical school journey, and thank you so, so much for supporting me. Like, I'm so thankful. I really appreciate each and every single one of you. If you wanna see more of my face or are interested in my content, please like, subscribe, comment, share and turn on the post notifications. I wish you all the best on your journey to medicine. I love each and every single one of you and adios.